Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about steel structures and connections in Revit. Now Revit 2019 has given us this cool looking steel tab and here we have some steel tools so I'm going to be going over that in this tutorial. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so what's great about this in this new steel tab, you can actually use it in the architectural template. So I'm just going to be using that because that's what I prefer. And before I model anything, I'm just going to set the units to meters. I think that's okay for this project with two decimal units. Okay, so here we have our steel tab and here we have some steel tools but in order to use them we need to have some steel structure already created and for that we're going to be using this structure tab so here we have some steel tools but first let's add some grid lines I think that's the good a good starting point so just type in GR for grid and I'm just going to place one like this then let's use the pick lines tool and let's offset it by 8 meters uh, let's do something like this. Okay, now again grid and let's do a horizontal one and now I'm just going to rename this one into A. So these were 1, 2, 3, 4 and this will be if I just go here with pick lines and let's do an offset of 10 meters and as you can see it automatically took this new naming strategy and it just named it ABC. Okay, so we have some grid lines over here and let's place some columns right now. So I'm just going to type in CL for structural column and as you can see here we've got some basic universal column loaded in already so I'm going to be using that one and here we have this option of placing it at grid intersections and I'm going to be using this but before we click on this we need to set the height of the column and I'm going to make it go to connect to level 2 so it's going from level 1 to level 2 and now I'm just going to select this at grid intersections you just select all of them and as you can see here these columns will appear so you just go finish and now they're modeled and you need to change the detail level to fine in order to see these these beams or these columns now let's do the beams so I'm just going to type in BM for structural beam or for place beam and again we have the universal beam loaded in already so I'm just going to be using that one and now we can just place it and let's go to level 2 because we don't need any beams at level 1 and let's just change this to fine and yeah let's do BM for beam and here you can see we all, we have this on grid lines but I don't really prefer using this one and I'll show you why in a, min in a minute so I'm just going to start off from 2 meters from here and place it kind of like this and now as you can see we can't really select either the columns or the beams that's why we need to go into VR or view range and change this to unlimited and change this to unlimited as well and go OK and now as you can see we can kind of modify these beams now the reason why I just placed a beam instead of going with this place on grid lines if I place it here you can see oops so let's try that again on grid lines yeah you need to hit finish and now as you can see it kinda split it in three different beams and we don't really have this overhang so that's the reason why I used the just placing a beam and I'm just going to copy it and copy it multiple times so just copy it like that okay so we have our beams and let's do kind of the, these beams over here on the ends and as you can see we can't really snap this over here unless we check this 3D snapping which I don't know why because we're not in 3D but anyway that's Revit logic for you okay let's place it here and let's place one over here so we have this little cool overhang and now let's do the rest of this and we can do that as a beam system so you just type in BS for beam system okay BS for some reason the shortcut isn't working so I'm just going to hit here and now we need to sketch a beam system so you basically sketch it as a rectangle and I already have this beam over here so I'm going to be sketching from here to here kinda like that 
let's make sure it's going from the center line and now for the beam direction I like to just place a line like this in the center line that's kind of determining the direction of the beams and here I'm going to go with fixed distance of 2 meters and let's justify it at the center so just go finish yeah and this is what we get so we get this beam system and it automatically tags it but we don't really need tags for this so I'm just going to select all of this go to filter check none framing tags apply ok and just delete okay so let's go into 3d right now and this is basically what we get so you get something that looks like this this is our beam construction let's say so now we can go here into steel and we can kind of play around with these tools and just a quick disclaimer before I continue I'm not a structural engineer of any type so please don't get mad when I do something that's completely silly okay so let's continue let's go here to this angle over here or this corner and you can see we have this connection that's going like so but let's say we want to change it let's say we want to have kind of a flush 45 degree cut over here so you have this uh, meter, meter tool and you just select it uh, wait for a second till it loads in you select these two and you just hit enter and you wait for a second and now you get this and as you can see here we have these two kind of one two connections and if we hit this one or this one it kind of exchanges and that's if you have kind of different uh, different beam uh, types or different sizes of beams and then this will allow you to change up the connection a bit or change up the coping of the connection but in this case we don't need to change it it's the same either way okay so next thing let's try well let's try this coping so you have this option and this allows you to kind of cope two elements and let's say we want to solve this connection over here so I'm just going to go here to cope select it select these two and hit enter and as you can see now it kind of we lost this part and that's not really something that we want to have so here you can see this is kind of the this dot over here this says that this is the main one that this column is the the thing that should be going through and if we select this thing you can see now our column is kinda made smaller or kinda cut over here and the main thing is this beam over here so you can select the, these connections and exchange this this kinda allows you to have some flexibility when working with these elements okay so next thing let's say we want to use this cut by that allows you to fix connections between kind of these two uh, these two beams so if I go cut by select these two and hit enter and as you can see now it allows me to kind of cut as you can see this beam is kind of going inside of this beam and it makes the connection better and again we get these two dots and we can kind of exchange them but as you can see this should remain the main beam so the main element that's going through that's the one that should be with the big blue dot and the one with the small dot and number two that should be on the element that's kind of the secondary element that's just being connected to it another cool new option we have here is this contour cut now this allows you to cut through your steel elements and this is great if you perhaps have this let's say we have this here this here beam and our floor construction is quite thin and we need to have some installations running through this beam and of course this should be determined by the structural engineer can you cut through this beam but let's say that structural engineer said yeah go right ahead cut a small hole through that to carry some installations through that so you just go here to your contour cut you select this face of the beam and then you just use these standard modeling tools to just place something like that and let's place a radius of 0 0.03 I know I'm using meters for something that's supposed to be used in millimeters so I'm sorry about that but anyway you get the point and now let's maybe go to shaded or maybe realistic and you get the point see you have this hole poking through okay let's go back to shaded perhaps 
Okay, another tool call we get is these structural connections. Now, this used to be in a form of a plugin in previous versions of Revit, so you need to install a plugin and then you can work with these structural connections. And what's awesome about Revit 2019 is it comes directly with the software, which is really cool. So to use these structural connections, if I just select this tool, if and if I open up this drop menu in the properties bar, you can see we don't really have any connections loaded in. We just have this generic connection and that's quite useless at this point. So how do you load some in? So you have this little 45 degree uh, arrow that's pointing down to the right. So not this drop menu, this one, and you open it up and you wait for a second and here it is. So you've got some connections over here and if you scroll down this is everything you have. Now I'm just going to load all of them in so just hold the shift select all of them and go add. So these were available and now they're all loaded in and you just hit OK. And how do you use them? So here we have this connection over here so I'm just going to go here to structural connections select the two of these hit enter and now you can see we have this connection and if we scroll down we can search for something that we can use. So let's go with this clip angle. I think that's the most traditional way of connecting something like this. And we have placed it, but we can't really see it. You can see here, if I open up this clip angle, it looks really nice over here with this orange. And if I go over here and I can't see it, that's because we need to set the detail level to fine. And now you get it. So this looks amazing. You have all the bolts and all everything all the elements so they're loaded in and you can actually go to edit type or wait a second you can actually select it yeah go modify parameters and you can edit all of this or you can go here to edit and yeah so you have all of these parameters that can be edited now of course i'm not a structural engineer so i have no idea what any of this means but I'm guessing if you have any idea what that means, you're quite excited about this feature. But just as something to 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 improve the, the renderings and the look of the building and of course to help out a bit with the structural engineering if you can. Okay, so that's it for something like this. Now let's say you want to have some base plate over here to connect to our uh, footing or just basically some foundation. So you just go here to structural connection, you just select this and you hit enter and you get this little dot over here. You open this up and then you search for some base plate. So let's... Okay, so we have this one, we have this one. So you just find what's interesting for you. Well, let's try this one. Okay, we get these little two hooks. It looks quite cool and then we can just place a foundation here so you just go to structure you go to isolated foundation and let's load one in right now so let's just search over here to structural foundations yeah let's open this one up and let's just place it kind of like that and now if we go into wireframe you can see these little hooks are inside our foundation so the connection is strong there so I'm just going to show you a couple of more cool tools and for that I'm just going to select two of these and this beam and just copy them kind of out of the way over here. And once we have this I can select this beam and I can just connect it over here and connect it over here. And then I can just use the split tool or split element tool and kind of split it in the middle somewhere. And I can select this and I can go with this offset at the end okay I should have done that at the beginning yeah so put two meters over there and two meters over here so we get something that looks like this it looks kind of a like a roof so in order to connect to this a bit better you just go trim and extend and you kind of bring it a bit closer and now let's add a structural connection over here so I'm just going to go to steel connections select two of these place a connection and we have this apex apex haunch and it looks like that okay so that this looks quite cool and again when you have your connection you can kind of flip it around but in this case we don't need it and we can also place a connection over here so just go steel connection and then we can look for a connection so let's try 
Oh, let's try something like this. Okay, and when you try something that can't be done, you get this little warning triangle. So then you kind of search and go with maybe this clip angle. And as you can see, it's over there. And now if we spin this around, you can see it kind of flipped to the other side and this doesn't work. So you just hit the second dot because this should be the main element and this is just a secondary element. Okay, so we have two of these. But let's say you don't like this these connections that are offered by Revit. So let's say you want to create some of your own. So let's go over here and zoom in just a bit. And we have this plate element over here. So if we select it, we can go here and just set a work plane. So you can just go pick a plane. And I'm just going to pick this plane over here. So that's this face. And now let's place some rectangular plane like this. Okay, so I have something that looks like that. And let me just use the align tool over here to kind of align this to that. Yeah, so let's say I'm happy with this. And this isn't aligned anymore. So again. Okay, so let's say this looks good and I go finish. And as you can see, we have just another plate placed over here and we can change the thickness over here and then we have these other elements so maybe corner cut we select this and it kind of cuts this corner and we can actually change this to I don't know point one to make it larger and here as well so yeah so the cut is kind of bigger and we can add some bolts over here to actually make everything stay in place so you just go to bolts you select this and then you just need to select the face or actually the two elements you're connecting. Oh, let me try that again. Okay, so then you need to select the face. So you select your face on which you're placing your bolts and then you just place bolts like this. So they're kind of going like that. And now let's just rotate this in place. So kind of rotate it like this maybe make it go kind of like that put this over here yeah this looks all right so just go finish and sketch is invalid yeah sometimes it doesn't like when you skew it around so let's just place it like this yeah so when it's just perfectly rectangle, you can have your bolts a bit easier. Sometimes you can skew it a bit, sometimes you can't, so depends on the situation. But anyway, here you get some bolts and then here we've got just a bunch of other options. So maybe we can change this to three. So we've got three bolts over here, maybe even to four. So you can kind of play around. Now, of course, you should probably know what you're doing and there's probably some calculation on how many bolts should go here. So if you're a structural engineer, you probably know that and you're probably really excited about this tool. But anyway, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.